Yeah, I'm uh, glad Steve showed up. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, he gets in in the end. Not, uh, I was wondering if Tuesday night, if uh, Jeff Flake started drinking Pepto Bismol after he saw what happened mm-hmm. to Luther Strange. Yeah, thank. Uh, by the way, great question. Thank you so much. Let's talk about that for a second. One of the reasons we're out here in the West, uh, you know, we're going to actively meet uh, a lot of uh, folks that are going to fly in. We're going to talk to over the next couple of days about their interest in in running for the United States Senate. We think there's a real insurgency. Uh, I think if you look at the 2016 November 8th, President Trump, uh, we won kind of the same way. Grassroots uh, base. Mm. We didn't have a lot of money. We turned out a ton of uh, of kind of uh, working class folks that go door to door. That's exactly how Judge Moore ran, uh, won the other day. Judge Moore, thirty two million dollars by the uh, by the corporatists, the elites, to destroy him personally. About two two and a half million bucks uh, average donation. I think it was like twenty dollars uh, to to working class and middle class folks. Uh, and we won one big ten points uh, around ten point victory. Completely blew these guys out of the water. Um, Corker. Uh, Senator Corker, you know, took a look at the numbers on on Tuesday afternoon, and he decided to to throw uh, throw in the towel. Uh, so now that's going to be a, a, an open uh, a seat that people are going to go for. I think there'll be some announcements next week of a lot of folks that we've talked to and have interest. Uh, I think it's a great a pool of candidates there in Tennessee, uh, Mississippi. I think you're going to hear some announcements in the next couple of weeks or next couple of days. In addition, uh, Flake. I think there's guys like Flake that are going to take a look at the numbers and take a look at who's potentially running. And I think guys like Flake are going to start doing some polling. And I think they are also going to throw in the towel uh, because I just think they're going to see that, you know, it's just an uphill fight and that the grassroots are, are really fired up. I would tell everybody out there, there's a unique opportunity to basically replace uh, Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell does not work with the urgency that the President of the United States needs right now to get things done. You see this debacle on this last go-round of the Obamacare repeal and replace, really federalism, which was driven by uh, Lindsey Graham and, and, Je- and Rick Santorum and others. And by the way, it's not perfect, but I've been a big supporter of this from day one in the White House, Senator Graham and Senator Santorum and Mark Meadows came to me back in May. It's a, it's a program that we continue to work on, just kind of keep it simmering in case it was needed. I, I think it's got a lot of great attributes to it. It's clearly got some shortcomings, but hey, you can't make, uh, you know, you, you, you need to take this thing on and, and hopefully get it back to a, some sort of federalism. So it's, it's going to continue to be worked on. I think you're going to hear some stuff in the next couple of days to say this thing is, is far from dead. Uh, they did miss the September 30th uh, window this go around, but I don't think they're going to wait till spring. I think you're going to see people working on this. I think you may see some regular order. I think you may s- start to see some scheduled hearings, and people are getting serious about doing two things at one time, and that is tax reform and health care. And I think the Senate has gotten the joke sent by Roy Moore that the time for sitting on your laurels and working three days a week and taking these big breaks is over that the time to get on with the, you've got to sort out the health care situation in this country. We've got to sort out this complicated tax bill. These things have to get done. And I think the message coming from people like you on Tuesdays, we've had a belly full of this. So I think Flake, and i got to tell you, I think a lot of others, I think, in, you know, Deb Fisher in Nebraska, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, in, in Missouri, you're going to see, you know, you're going to see a lot of open seats. Uh, red state Democrats are going to, people are going to be competitive with that. But I think there's a handful of incumbents that right now think they're safe. And they're going to realize in the next week or two that they may not be as safe as they think because people are tired of it. People want to see action. So I thank you for a call, and, and that's where we stand on, on this United States Senate. But it's a unique time in history, I think, for the populist, nationalist, conservative movement to really make a big impact here. Steve, we've got to go to break, but when we come back, I might, uh, might, might ask you some of the questions that we've been being asked by the audience about that, uh, about that Graham Cassidy bill. Because while people, I think, accept the fact out there that this is, this is about as good as they're going to get right now, they are still concerned with the constitutionality of it, with what it leaves open for the Democrats if and when they resume you know, their control of the White House or the Senate. I'm going to talk to you about that in just a bit. We've got a uh, quick break now, ladies and gentlemen, but make sure you're on the lines. 866-957-2874-866-95. Patriot is the number here. This is Breitbart News Daily. We'll be right back. From the global news network of Breitbart.com, this is Breitbart News Daily. Welcome back to Breitbart News Daily. This is your co-host, Stephen K. Bannon, the executive chairman of Breitbart News our host, Raheem Kassam, sitting in for Alex Marlar, our editor-in-chief. Raheem in from London, and we're live in Colorado today as we take this on the road the entire week. Alabama, Colorado. You're listening to Sirius XM 125, The Patriot Channel. Our number, 866-95-PATRIOT, 866-957-2874. 
Remember, this is the show that the audience runs, the, the callers run. This is how we find out where America is, where America is going. It's your, you, the audience, that won the 2016 presidential election. I can say that because I was the CEO and I took, <laughs> I took all my ideas from you guys. So thank you very much. And we also won the, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in, uh, in Alabama on Tuesday in a massive, massive, massive blowout. Of the uh, of the corporate elites that run Washington D.C. Let's go to the boards, Raheem. What do we got here? Let's go to the boards. Eight six six nine five seven two eight seven four. We had a bunch of you on tax form this morning. Steve, you're going to love this. We've had we've had truckers calling in this morning. We had Kevin in Indiana. Uh, uh, God, I'm glad you got truckers because my dad my dad was listening to the show the other day when I got back here and he says, Hey, I notice it's a heavily female audience now. What's Raheem doing? Taking only female calls. <laughs> he says, Where's my truckers? He goes, I like the gals. He said the gals are so smart. They're on point. He says, but I haven't heard a trucker. Every time Raheem does, I don't hear any truckers. So we had truckers this morning. We had truckers this morning okay. quoting Frederick Bastiat. No, oh, my, no, that is yeah. that. Yes, that's the smartest audience in in all media. It's, it was amazing. What do we got here? Amazing. Got any truckers? Well, I'll tell you what. We got Tony in Ohio. Tony with an I, unfortunately, Steve. They, okay. <laughs> hey, Tony. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. I thought I'd, I thought I'd hit Steve with a female type since he was complaining already. How you doing, ma'am? <laughs> I'm doing great. Tony, what have you got for us this morning? So um, I'm one of your, your odd voters. I voted for Obama twice, and I actually mm -hmm. supported Hillary in 2008. Um, but once Obama got in, I realized that I was wrong. So I'm a huge Trump supporter. Mm -hmm. whole family is a huge Trump supporter. My problem is, is with all the comments that all the Democrats make now, they're not helping trying to win anyone back. If you're telling me, oh, Michelle Obama's saying I'm a woman, and if you don't didn't vote for Hillary, you didn't vote for yourself. You got um, you, you, Hillary Tony, saying, you're saying we're Tony, idiots. Tony, you're saying take a knee isn't isn't convincing you. You're saying that you're saying that what these people are doing out there, the the Russia investigation, and uh, Hillary's grand grand loser. Well, well, what she's talking about is identity politics. Right. You're talking about hey, I am woman, hear me roar. You're talking about they're they're trying. They're not talking about economic nationalism. They're not talking about bringing jobs back to Ohio. What they're talking about is is hate trying to trying to stir up hate as identity politics. Is that correct? I mean, that's all they're saying. Hillary's going out there right now telling everyone that Trump is such a racist. She's starting a race war so she can rise above when, when it, the ashes fall, per se. And okay, it's, okay, I'm okay. okay. Hold, 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 hang on. So I got that. That sounds great. Tell me, in Ohio, since you were an Obama, you were a Hillary person and you were Obama twice, what is President Trump doing today that impresses you from the, your perspective in Ohio? To me, he's standing. I feel that he's standing up for me. I am. I am middle class. I am 100% a middle class person. I struggle. I, I struggled with paying for my health care. I struggle with everything. He's standing up for me. He's trying to bring jobs back. He's standing up to build the wall. I believe in immigrants. My husband is an immigrant. My in-laws are immigrants. They all had to come here. Green cards. They all had to come here and work and show that they were able to be U.S. citizens to get their U.S. citizenship. Right. Okay, ma'am, thank you very much. Fa fantastic call. That's the heart of America right there. That's why Donald Trump ran as an agent of change, because Obama promised it but didn't deliver, and Hillary didn't know what she was doing. She still, if you read the book, you hear her roadshow. By the way, understand something. Hillary Clinton is running for president of the United States in 2020. There's yeah. no doubt. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Yeah. I'm not saying the exploratory committees, but they're, 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 they are, right they, now they can't give it up. Right like she's running for president. Absolutely. She's doing the book tour. And by the way, there, you see every day that Clinton media yep. throws out her, says, hey, man, 300,000 copies in the first week. The book tour is packed. You know, Hillary's out there, and she's got, uh, she's got Michelle Obama now who's saying it was all about gender. It was all about thing. Hillary's building up. By the way, there's 45 folks that are going to run for president on the Democratic side, so Stop. it's going to be wild. What do you, what do you mean? There's going to be 45, Why? I'm tracking 45 people right Why? now. Because it's forty-five. Why is it so, because would that be the largest field they've ever the had. The largest field, but why not? Because it's an open field. You, know, you got the populace. You got the billionaires. You got the Clinton. By the way, Al Gore is going to take a look. John Kerry's going to take a look. Jo Joe Biden's coming to Alabama next week, folks. And what Joe Biden's trying to prove, he's not there just for Doug Jones. Here's mm -hmm. what he's doing. He's down there to show that he's a Democrat that can be competitive in the South. 
Okay, this is all about 2020. That's what Joe Biden's down there for. Let's hit some more stuff on the board. Raheem, I got to get you rolling, dude. You got to be on the trigger here, man. Do you know how many? No, 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 this, is, this, is, this is too gen- this is too too English. Let's roll. And by the way, folks, let's get on the trigger. <laughs> when you get on the show, we're trying to get as many calls as possible. You're getting a little lazy out there. The executive chairman's back. I've I'm been, cracking been, the I'm been, cracking the whip here. I'm cracking the whip at Brian. I'm been, cracking the whip. My guess. I want the I callers ready to go. Enough, let's Steve. roll. Let's roll. Let's go to Rick in Canada on line four. Rick, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning, gentlemen. I just love yeah. you guys. I don't know how you do it, but keep up the positive energy. Thanks, um, thanks right brother. Ahead. Tough to have an English ale in the glass. By the way, I'm glad you're saying that because I got accused. Like Chris Ruddy, my brother over at Newsmax, did an interview, and I think it was in Vanity Fair, called me Trump's dark angel. Right? Yeah. I'm like the I'm like the force of like he says this nationalism is like a dark thing that Jared and Ivanka bring the settling influences of moderation. Right? I'm the dark. So I've been called the dark overlord, the dark angel, the prince of darkness. I mean, I, I kind of I think Darth Vader. Darth Vader everything. is a trend there. I've been, you know, I'm the Grim Reaper. Grim Reaper. Not alive. Yep. But well, the audience here knows. I'm, you know, I've come out with a uh, Rick. What have you got for us this attitude. morning? Well, Steve, we have virtually no on. conservative media in Canada. And most of my family and even my conservative family and friends. Hold it, Canadian, hold it, CBC, Canadian Broadcasting is quite conservative, isn't it? Yeah, right. Communist <laughs> bullcrap corporation. Um, I was just wow. want, wondering at, what is your strategy against uh, the constant mantra of the entertainment media, such as Colbert and Seth Meyers, and their influences. Have you ever met these fellows yourself? Is, oh, yeah, that's a great this, question. This thank, you for, th- yeah, th- thank you very much for calling. It's uh, Listen, Andrew always said, culture is upriver from uh, politics. Right now, as you know, news is kind of everything, even right. Jimmy Kimmel and St- Stephen Colbert, to drive viewership. The way that Kimmel and, and Colbert are competing in late night right now is make it very political, very anti-Trump. Right. So what we're doing is is exposing that. That's one of the reasons uh, big Hollywood is on fire, mm-hmm. because all we do is expose the hypocrisy of these morons in the entertainment industry. By the way, you understand something. These actors and actresses, they're all dumb as ticks, and they're all lazy. Right, it's like pieces of furniture. Well, you have to so, see what so, Jennifer so, Lawrence did the so, other day. So, so, so they're all dumb as ticks. And now it, she has to take a break from acting. Yeah, yeah. Take what a, she by said the way, so by the way, that by the way, it's why movie attendance is down. People yeah. are tired of it. It's why they're not watching National Football League. They're yeah. cutting the court in ESPN. They've politicized everything. And you guys are voting with your feet, which I think is fantastic. The reason I wanted to bring Rick on with that yeah. question as well is because it links directly to, to to some of the people that might seek the Democrat nomination next time are we going to have celebrities running i think you're going to have guys by the way when i say 45 people yeah. that we're tracking 45 i think it's even more than that you've got politicians but listen you're going to have billionaires run the trump uh, phenomenon on the right is going to have a lot of people look at this and say hey the one thing i can do is be taken seriously mm-hmm. if i run you know all of a sudden i'm a guy running a coffee shop was it howard shorts at, at, at starbucks and the, the next thing you know he's on meet the press howard every shorts, day yeah. and they're taking his pontification seriously right you're gonna have billionaires run you're gonna have guys i'm not saying the rock's gonna run but i think a couple of people like the rock are gonna take a, the rock a look. dwayne johnson well, the I wwe just, star I, I think people like him i'm not saying yeah. him but i think there are gonna be a number of celebrities that do take a look at this you're gonna have the old guard you, okay jerry brown uh, who i thought could have been very competitive in uh, in 16 i said this jerry brown al gore john Kerry, mm. uh, joe biden and hillary clinton are going to take the last hurrah is there one shot for them to kind of be an elder statesman. You're going to have the populist wing. The Bernie's, Bernie's going to run again. Bur- absolutely. Bernie's yeah, running again. Yeah, yeah. You, are, you can tell Bernie's running. He's running on single payer. So yep. there's going to be 45 people. By the way, for us, it'll be fantastic. The one thing the Democratic Party, remember, what we're talking about in Alabama, we are having a civil war in the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. We are fighting for the direction of this party. We're clearly more of the populist, nationalist, conservative wing. We're more of the worker base wing of it. You have the governing win- wing of it, which is the more of the establishment. You have a moderate wing of it. Um, and we, we're, we're, we're proud of this. We're having a civil war. We're fighting for the sole direction of this party. We say a lot of times the Republican Party is like the Whigs in 1854. Uh, mm-hmm. But the Democrats haven't had that. You know why the Democrats haven't had that? They don't have a Breitbart. It's all it's all a well, pill, well, it's all a pillow fight well, over well, there. If, it's if, all a pillow if, fight if, over if there. If they had a, if they had a bright bar, then then the whole Bernie thing at the last convention would have been blown up in such a big way it would have caused a civil war. That's right? my point. Talk, talk, about, talk about that for well, a second. Ver- look, they averted civil war. They cheated. We know they cheated in terms of Hillary. Every right. Wasserman right. cheated right. for her girlfriend, right. and and, right. and 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 that's what happened. Look, let's okay, go to let's go. let's go back to the calls. Let's go to gosh, there's so many great ones here. Let's go to Rick in Oregon on line two. Rick, good morning. Welcome to the show. Morning. Rick, I'm in uh, hey. Central Oregon, and um, well, what, what's it going to do to get take get rid of uh, Ron Wyden and Jeff Merkley? 
It's going to take a lot of hard work. I think what you, brother, thank you so much for the call. Those are two guys. You know, Merkley, by the way, is another guy that's trying to run for president of the United States. Write that name down. This is a incredibly really? progressive. Incredibly, thank you so much for the call, brother. Um, the, um, uh, the, you know, Merkley and Wyden are two of the most progressive guys. And by the way, I think Oregon's a state. That can really be flipped. I think where the focus in Oregon's got to be is be on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, House of Representatives out there, the the state house. Uh, you can flip that on the census. You can change some of these districts. I think Oregon. I, I say this. I think Oregon is one that we can look at in flipping, not in 2020, but I think it's one that's on the charts for us to kind of take a look at. But this guy Merkel is uh, now. I do like Wyden a little bit in the fact that he is very 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 much with us on trade. He's not with us on other stuff, but Wyden is a very tough nut. When it comes to trade, he's done, a, I think, a very good job up there for the lumber industry in, uh, in Oregon. He's been a guy that's been shoulder to shoulder with us and, and taking on the Canadians uh, in some of these issues of, uh, about softwood. Uh, so he's done, a, he's done a good job. He's, he's quite progressive otherwise, but he's good with us on trade. Um, this guy, uh, Merkley, is a guy that keep your eye on. He's one of the 45 or 46 that we're tracking uh, for 2020. Thanks so much for that, Rick, in Oregon. It's funny, the, 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 the nature of the calls changes when, when you come on. Yeah, people, when you come on, people it's called, want, en- it's called energy. No, people want to talk. No, it's called energy. See, when, when I'm here, people want to talk about. This is They want to talk about philosophy. They want to talk about culture. They want to talk about sartorial elegance. When you come on, they just want to bang, bang, politics, bang, politics, bang, politics, exactly, politics, politics. Exactly. It's incredible. This is what, this is about the energy of the colonies versus our mother country. I just I'm trying to you know trying to help you out here. Really. Yeah, I was, just, I was sitting here before you came. I was sitting here with my pipe and my slippers. <laughs> and now now you got me standing up. Let's go to Jim in Virginia on line four. Jim, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning, and thank you. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Madden, I want to say thank you for one thing you did during the election before a start. You got thank President you, Trump and the Abbots in Virginia. And well, I, I, I tell you, the, West Virginia the, appreciate that. This is, and I love Southwest Virginia. I went to school down there, and my, my, my sister still lives down there in uh, Salem. The, uh, but here's the thing. It was, it was your guys' guidance. All we did on the campaign was, quite frankly, just to still the wisdom and guidance that you had given me over the previous what eight or nine months as the host of Breitbart News Daily, and uh, and we just it was just distilled wisdom of of this audience that put into place as a strategy, and we won what three hundred six electoral votes. So I want to thank you as a representative of all the audience for for helping Jim, us out. Jim, what's where, where are you taking us this morning? All right, um, as far as the uh, tax cuts go, I don't see where it's going to really be any cuts toward me. Um, it's more of a bait and switch to me because you're switching one thing for another, and I don't. This, this, this tax I'm bill, you're not convinced. Anything. Can you? Okay, okay. Well, when you guys call, be specific. Give me. I, I got the overall, but be specific. Why is it a bait and switch on you, and why is it not helping you? Well, for one thing, if I can't knock off my state taxes, and then all I'm doing is switching it for a few extra thousand. On uh, on the on another deductible, I'm actually mm. going to wind up losing money because my state taxes are double, more than double what I've been able to knock off there. That's is, that, is, is that a bait, is that a bait and switch, or is that an intentional move to show you that your state is ripping you off? Oh, well, it's good. My new the state's been ripping me off for years. And yeah, but I'm now you got to now you got to do something about it because you can't else. you can't. Yeah, but Jim, now you got to do something about it because you can't get that deduction. You were you were you were resting on your laurels before because the tax code gave you that gave you that gave you that loophole. Yeah, gave you that and, and, it's, and there's at least something oh. to motivate people to start try to get to control of their state governments. It motivates that, but it also has motivated me for the last year to year and a half to stay on my congressman's butt about three and four times a week. Mm. Well, thank you so much, great, great, great. About- yeah, great call, brother. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Good input. Want to hear specifics? Get ready to be on the trigger when you call about the taxes. Be specific about what you don't want. I don't want to hear a bunch of whining. I want to hear. It. By the way, Jim would not whine. He came in with a very good, a specific thing. But come in with specificity. Why you don't want the tax? But we want to change the tax bill. I want to hear your your comments, particularly about what you think about the small business. What do you think about the double standard deductions for you? What do you think about the state taxes not being able to rip off? There's a lot of stuff here in this tax bill. Uh, the New York Times and other people are calling it a boondoggle, calling it a sham. Uh, there's other people that are more populist that say it doesn't do enough for the working class and for the and for the middle class. So it's obviously quite controversial, but it's the opening bid in what's going to be a long, nasty grind 
up on Capitol Hill. And, we've, and, 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 we've, and we've not had any complimentary calls about the tax, uh, the tax uh, reform uh, plan at the moment yet either. So, you know, we want to hear from both sides. 866-957-2874. Quick break now. When we come back, more of your calls. Stephen K. Bannon, Raheem Kassam here on Breitbart News Daily. Sirius XM Patriot presents Breitbart News Daily. Welcome back. This is Breitbart News Daily. You're listening to Sirius XM 125, the Patriot Channel. Our number is 866-95-PATRIOT, 866-957-2874. Raheem Kassam, the editor-in-chief of uh, Breitbart London, Stephen K. Bannon, the executive chairman of, I guess, the whole shooting match here at Breitbart. Uh, We are live from Colorado Springs, Colorado, uh, just in from Montgomery, uh, Alabama, uh, yesterday afternoon. As we're touring America to uh, to kind of throw a little gasoline on the revolt, right? A little gasoline on the fire. A little. A little gasoline on the fire. Causing trouble. Um, in fact, C- uh, CNN this morning has a, a pretty good story about us. It's called uh, Come Retribution. Mm. Breitbart and Bannon uh, are going after the consultants that uh, that worked on the... Um, that uh, worked on the uh, the opposition to to Luther uh, to work for Luther Strange and try to personally destroy Judge Moore, which we thought was a uh, was unacceptable. And uh, we hope we went down with uh, with uh, uh, Phil Robertson from Louisiana and Nigel Farage. Raheem was able to get Nigel to come in from England to go down and help the good folks in Alabama set things right. And uh, the, Tuesday was a was a really a monumental victory, and it'll be quite historic. Uh, as time goes on, and really a revolt of the working class against the elites in Washington, D.C. Let's go back to the phone line, shall we, Steve? Sure. Uh, 866-957-2874 is the number, 866-95-PATRIOT. Line 2, Rick's in Utah. Rick, good morning. Yeah, how are you? It's, a, it's an honor to speak to you and Steve. Steve, love you, Steve, man. I'm glad to hear you back on the radio. Uh, uh, th- thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. Still, Rick, Rick, I don't understand, Steve, why in the Breitbart store we're not selling Steve Bannon T-shirts, masks, coasters, uh, uh, rings, belts, belt buckles, Cause, cause, cause socks. Because ha- Larry Solov hasn't negotiated my, uh, my, my deal yet. I haven't. I got to get my Your swag. To my royalty deal, man. I got to get my so If I'm going to sell swag, I got to get my. If you go- by the way, the first one I'm going to do is the one that Nigel and Matthew Richardson and you guys gave me from London. Yes. Uh, the, pa- the portrait of. Uh, yes. We can't talk about it. It's a Ooh. double secret probation portrait, but they, they got a, a very funny gag gift for me at the Christmas party, and uh, it's, it's very dear to my heart. It's, it hangs in the, uh, or didn't, I guess it leans in the embassy up on the side. Propped, up. Propped Rick, up. Rick, Rick, what have you got for us this morning? Well, I just, Steve, since Steve has been, you know, part of this administration, he, he's probably got quite a bit of insight on it. Is this the new norm uh, for not passing anything and saying it's never good enough? You know, it's, that's all you hear. It's not good enough. Uh, we, we can't pass it. We can't uh, you know, they get rid of Obamacare because it's not good enough, or it just the new plan's like that's not good enough. Be the new norm, you know. So Thank you so is- much. Great, great call. Okay, here's the question: Is that listen? That's a legislative process. This thing's going to be messy. The point is, people got to keep working and got to keep grinding this thing. You're going to find out on this healthcare thing in the next couple of days. This and by the way, I'm a big supporter, and I understand it's not perfect. There, there's some constitutional questions on Obamacare. There's all sorts of things out there that uh, you know people are upset about. However. Graham, Santorum, Cassidy, Mark Meadows, the direction of federalism. Because, folks, you're going to have a choice. Okay, you're going to have a choice. The choice is either between federalism or socialism. You see where Bernie Sanders, you see where the Democrats are going, it's going to be single payer. If you don't get something done here on, uh, on kind of deconstructing at least part of Obamacare, and, and by the way, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. All you folks out there, they're going to call up and talk about the constitutionality and everything like that. I just got to tell you, where are the votes? You all, and I pushed in the White House to have that vote to repeal only back in June, and you guys had 41 votes. So don't call up and start banging me on the Constitution here. They don't need to. I'll bang you no, on the no, Constitution. No, no, on a repeal. No, okay, you don't have the – okay. You I, don't have the votes. That's fine. Why are they still, why are they still working on, on a 60-vote 60 60 process? No, no, I'm not here. even talking about 60 votes. I'm I know. About, you, 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 you can you get have, to 50. You had 41 votes, guys. You're not even close. You can get to you, 51. You, 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 you had 41 votes on repeal only. You couldn't pass it in the House. When all you guys out there – in Constitution land, can call me up and walk me through. Hey, going to get over 50 votes. They had reconciliation on this. You didn't need to get to 60. In June, they put it up in the Senate, and I was one of the ones in the White House say we got to force a vote on repeal only because I used to host Breitbart News Daily, and I know that all these callers are going to call and they're going to moan and groan, and we've got to just repeal Obamacare. 
Let me go back on the record. Okay, so but Show when, you're me where done, the votes when you're done next year, is there going to be enough votes for repeal, straight repeal? There's not going to be. Uh, I don't think there's going to be enough votes for straight repeal because by the time this is done in 18, there's going to be something done on, on Obamacare. There's got to be something done on Obamacare. If you don't get something done on Obamacare, okay, you're not going to have a big. You're not going to pick up eight or nine seats. Okay, you're just not going to do it. You've got to get taxes done. You have to get Obamacare done. Do not let perfect be the enemy of the good. Isn't, and, the, then this isn't thing, it a stronger argument to say that we can't get anything done in Obamacare unless we win those seats? Well, I, you can say that, but you know people are tired of hearing that. You've got to get mm. something done right now. You've got reconciliation. You get mm. done with 50 votes. Mm. And what you're going to find out, folks, this is why history is all interconnected and tied together. Everybody out there in the audience, there's going to be a revelation over the next couple of days of why this thing really didn't come up for a vote today, and you're starting to hear a little bit of things. Yeah. It's because a certain senator in Mississippi was not able to kind of make the vote. And by the way, this is going to tie back exactly to one of the biggest, nastiest yeah. fights we had on this radio show. We had at Breitbart the 2014 Senate primary runoff with a great guy named Chris McDaniel. That thing was stolen from the grassroots. Chris McDaniel won in the first round. Mm -hmm. He almost got to 50. I think it was 300 votes short. It was stolen by Thad Cochran. It was yeah. stolen by the boys down in Yazoo City, Mississippi, the Haley Barber gang. They stole that from Chris McDaniels. He's one of the best guys. He's been a tremendous United States senator. Yep. This is all coming home to roost, folks. The karma of 2014 is, has been visited on the United States Senate. There'll be more on that. Plays out of the next couple of days. And Chris McDaniel, mark my words, Chris McDaniel is going to be a major player here in uh, in 2018. We've got a bunch of great calls here, Steve. We want to get to as many as possible. Al's in Michigan on line two. Al, good morning. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, we have their tax system called the AMT, the Alternative Minimum Tax. It's simplified. It's flat. Why don't we just call it the Alternative Maximum Tax and lower the rate? Don't even have to change the initials. Problem solved. Great. Thank you very much for the call. That's fantastic. Good good example. Uh, let's hit some more Specifics. Calls. Specific. Exactly. Keep going. We want guys we're on the trigger coming to give a specific idea. If the audience wants to respond to that, get on the phone right now. Our number is 866-95-PATRIOT. 866-957-2874. Remember, this is an audience-driven show. You run the you run the show. You drive the, uh, the tempo of the conversation jo every day. Joel's in Connecticut on line four. Joel, good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Thanks for taking my call. Go right ahead. So I'm driving 95 on my way to Newport, Rhode Island, and I uh, was thinking about how bad the budget deal is in Connecticut and what's going wrong in Connecticut. It's directly analogous to what's going on in Washington. And, Steve, I wonder where uh, Trump and his administration come down and actually proposing a budget because I think their tax reform is going to be blown out of the water because the Democrats are going to get their budget message out there first. Where do you come down I, on that? I, I, I think it's a great. I think it's a great. Your your point's a great uh, point. You know, we put in I think a very aggressive budget back in the spring. Let me ask you something. You're in Connecticut right now. You're going to Newport, Rhode Island, where I went to Officer Canada School, become a naval officer. Oh. It's a fantastic town. I love Newport. But let me ask you about Connecticut. There's a governor's race coming up there. People are not talking about how. And this is gets back to these state taxes that are such a critical part because you're not going to be able to write them off under the Trump plan and this new tax bill. T t Connecticut is a financial disaster. Are people in this Absolutely. governor's race? Are people in this governor's race starting to talk about what? And by the way, Connecticut used to be no taxes. There was no income tax up to the early '90s. I think it's four and a half or five percent now. Connecticut is one of the biggest financial disasters in this country. Nobody up there is talking about it. What do you think about this governor's race? Well, first off, living in Fairfield County, um, everything, including the public news, is slanted towards the opposition party right now. So you're really not hearing any budget proposal out of the Republican Party that they could pin on a governor to bring financial stability back to the state as large corporations, Aetna and GE, just to name two, are leaving in droves. There is no message here, and there is no governor carrying that torch. There is a, someone up in Danbury, the, the mayor of Danbury, who's trying, but I only know about him because somehow I signed up for an email newsletter. That's it. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the call. By the way, he nailed something right there. Two great companies that have been in Connecticut forever, Aetna and General Electric, mm. I think, both punched out. One of the reasons that it got to be such a tough business environment. Uh, these kind of things we're going to be talking about are inextricably linked to both the budget. And, and this is one of the reasons the this, this state tax thing is a big deal. Yes. It's a very big deal. And you folks ought to be very focused on this. What do you want to do with state taxes? Should they be able to be written off against your income taxes? Or do you penalize – did I say that? Do you penalize – 
the out of control blue states like uh, is it California and New York? I That's think right. To come to mind. That's right. We've got two great calls on the line. We don't have time for both of them, but I want to take you guys after the break as well. So don't go anywhere. Both the Kentucky callers as well. Uh, we, we want to talk about that. We've got a combination of uh, two different topics here. Malcolm's in North Carolina on line five. Malcolm, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning, gentlemen. Thanks for taking my call. Um, you know, you, everyone's talking about uh, what am I going to get? What am I going to get? Well, how about we take away the NFL's tax exempt status? You want this, Whoa, this protest thing baby. to go away? How about oh, it'll baby. go away in 24 hours? Why does the NFL have a tax? It's a scam. Thank you very much, brother. He, he's absolutely right. It's a scam from the old days about antitrust, and it's because the owners are, are, are crony capitalists. Their owners are part of the fix. The owners. It's a, by the way, it's a disgrace. If you had, you know, if, if, if in the old days of Vince Lombardi and these guys, if a team had not come out in the field, the Lombardi and those guys would say, we're going to forfeit the game. First off, with a coach like Lombardi, there's no chance they wouldn't come on the field and stood for the national anthem. It's inconceivable. But they would have forfeited the games. And then they fired the head coach, and then they fired the players. Right? It's just, and by the way, this whole thing with the NFL, if you want to, by the way, out there in land, if you want to protest, it's very simple. Cut your cord. Stop watching. Cancel NFL Direct. Uh, don't buy any more of the merchandise. Call the franchises up. Call the office and cancel your season tickets. You got a voice here. You got to vote. Don't whine about it. Do something about it. If you don't like the way that they're they're 